So and here uh, I have this uh, simple building from uh, our partners at Concert Tech. Uh, and unlike um, well all other formats, we have to make uh, we have we bring uh, Revit data to FME and of other formats in two steps. First, you have to export data from Revit, dump it to a, some intermediate format. For that, here in Revit, in add-ins, we have a special button. Uh, you can see our logo here. We press it, we specify where we would like to go, and say save, and the export begins. Uh, I will cancel that, because I already did that. Uh, so, uh, and I'm going to show you a simple scenario uh, imagine that uh, we are building this uh, house and we have some schedule which we have to follow uh, and this schedule is here. So it lists uh, a lot of elements, walls, uh, roof, ceilings, uh, ceiling, uh, windows, doors and uh, some dates where they have to be installed and when they actually were installed. So you can see that. Well, some of them, some of the elements were installed later than they had to be, and some of them weren't installed at all yet. Ooh, so we would like to somehow visually show this progress uh, uh, with with some uh, simple uh, format uh, like PDF again, because it's really easy to share these PDF files with, with everyone. There is no special software, and it's it's compact, and you can send it easily to wherever you want. So uh, I will show you how it uh, can work. So here we can type Revit. So again, to be very clear, Dimitri, you'd be picking up the file that you dumped out interactively. Yes, exactly. From yes, yes. So you, whatever that button generated for me, uh, the RVZ file, I pick it here. So, hey, uh, Dimitri, I just need to mention that folks are asking, how do they get that fancy button in their Revit? And the answer is, if you install FME 2014, we will automatically detect that you have Revit and put that in there. And that little thing does not use an FME license. It just is added. It's a standalone little utility, and it's part of our installer that we sniff out if there's Revit and, uh, and add it. If you, if you add Revit to your, your system after you installed FME, then you can go to our integration console. And actually, Dimitri, I know I'm off-roading, but can you just start your integration console? Oh, definitely. Yeah. So inside of your FME folder, there'll be something about integration console. Down in utilities. Yeah. And so you start that thing. And then um, it'll show you there that it's got Revit. Revit exporter has been added. So that's all. And you would be able to basically uninstall or install there. So that's that's how. Sorry for the quick detour, but folks, that's the key thing. Dave, go ahead. Uh, one caveat to that is that um, we need to be a bit level specific uh, with this. So if you have Revit 64 installed, um, you need to install FME 64 presently to get that uh, oh, yes. the plugin installed. If you have Revit 32-bit, you can install FME 32-bit. Now, FME 32-bit and 64-bit can coexist uh, yes. perfectly happily on the same computer. They, by default, install to different folders, and they, they don't interfere with uh, each other in any way. In fact, on my laptop here, I believe I've got six different versions of FME, <laughs> both 32-bit and 64-bit, all installed, and they're all getting along just fine. Right. But we'll try, we are working to make that so we don't care. Like, if you, whichever way FME it is, we'll do the right thing inside Revit. But anyway, sorry for that quick detour. Dimitri, head us back. So you're adding the Revit model into your system that you exported from Revit. And what else? Okay, so there he goes. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Show now, uh, I will show you the parameters. Uh, here we have a few uh, data views. Uh, if you are really... Uh, a professional in Revit and FME, then you could use all Revit elements, which gives you a hierarchical model, a single hierarchical model of the geometry, uh, where you have your project, underneath you have uh, your site, then the next level of hierarchy is the building, then the building has stories or floors, then floors have uh, walls, walls have windows, so, and you can, using that X query that I showed you earlier, somehow get to the elements that you need, then uh, along with that you get hundreds of tables 
that describe all the parameters, all the relations, all the types, uh, all the units, and then you can join them uh, together and get exactly what you need. But I think it's uh, well really hard to be a professional in both areas, uh, and we try to make uh, views that would take uh, care of some of the scenarios. Uh, for example, this one takes only external elements, uh, roof, walls, doors, windows, only external doors and windows, and make a, like a shell which you could then save to ArcGIS for, say, city planning purposes. Uh, this one would extract all the floor plans in 2D. Uh, this one uh, will show uh, a, a lot of Revit elements with all the attributes that well, exist uh, in, in a Revit file. So this is how I would do that. So I would pick something, say OK, click OK, and that will bring me a few uh, feature types, Revit elements that uh, from which I can uh, pick which one I really would like to use. Say, uh, I don't need this, this, I can just leave a few Say OK, and that will add them to the work, uh, to my workspace. But I will open a pre can one, uh, this one. And so here I read all those feature types, and then I read this uh, completion dates Excel spreadsheet, which we already saw here. So then here I merge that, and maybe, maybe I can already run it and explain what is, what is going on. Here I merge them. These uh, two data sets by ID, uh, you can see ID column here in Excel, and all the Revit elements have this name from which I can extract this ID. I join them, then I apply uh, a few conditions. Uh, I compare uh, completion date, uh, scheduled versus uh, actual completion date, and I also have some preset, uh, preset. Uh, well, say uh, today's date, which I compare also the values uh, against. So, and then I just depending on what I get, I color them differently. So, green means that it's on schedule and already constructed. Orange means that it was created later, but still it's already created. Red means that it wasn't created yet, although it had to be, and then this means that it well wasn't wasn't created. Uh, so we'd, wasn't we'd be hoping yet. to not see very much red. Is that right? Uh, well, ideally, yes. Uh, so here is the file. Let me just switch to different to this different mode. And maybe one more thing before we switch to PDF. Here, I used a fan out. Mm. by feature type, which are those uh, things uh, on the left. So that will mean that in PDF I will see different layers under those names. So here is my PDF and my layers. I can see that my roof was installed on time. I can turn it off. So I can turn off my ceilings and check and see that, well, I see that a few walls are already installed or built, but a little bit later than they had to be. Uh, then I can see, I can turn off the walls and see that, well, we're probably really behind with installing doors and windows. Some of them are, well, had to be, have to be there, but they're not. I'm glad and, to see, Dimitri, that the toilets, or what's the deal with the toilets? Well, they're fine. Uh, they, they have to be installed later, at a later date. Yes, no Revit model is complete without at least a few toilets. That's been our experience. 